in today's video. Hi guys, welcome to this week's video. Before we start, make sure to subscribe if you are not and give a thumbs up if you enjoy the video. In its native habitat, this ant species is known as the brown house ant. But for everybody else, Fadoli megacephala is known as the African big-headed ant, one of the world's worst invasive ant species. Originally from the southern parts of Africa, this ant species has spread to the four corners of the world and is now referred to as a tramp ant species, a species which travels from place to place, inadvertently transported in soil or inside cargo on ships, trains and other human means of transportations. Tramp ants are associated with human activity. For the most part, tramp ants thrive only in disturbed environments and do not penetrate intact natural habitats, but as humans and their disturbance spread, so do the tramp ants. This ant species belongs to the Mimircinae subfamily and the Fidoli genus. As usual, in all Fidoli species, they have four castes, the queens, the males, and the dimorphic caste of workers, the majors, which are also called soldiers, and the miners. And as you can see, it's the soldier caste that defines their common name, the big headed ants. Workers are brown, often with a darker head and abdomen. Miners measure 2 mm, while majors measure 3.5 mm. In Fedoli megacephala, minor workers typically do most of the foraging, and majors primarily remain inside their nest, caring for the colony defense, food storage, and seed miling. The African big headed ant has a clear preference for shady and humid habitats. They can be found nesting in disturbed soils, lawns, flower beds, under objects such as bricks, cement slabs, or flower pots, around trees and water pipes, along the base of structures and walkways, where displaced soil is usually observed from the action of ants digging below the surface. Well cared for lawns may have big headed ants infestations that are less noticeable, except along the edges where lawns meet the walkways, where piles of soil are often deposited. Big headed ants populations expand into neighboring areas by following along these edges or roadways. Population movements into new areas to establish nests and subsequent displacement of other ant populations can be very rapid. Regarding the ants life cycle, queens are known to lay from 90 to 300 eggs per month, averaging 6 eggs per queen per day. Temperature has a substantial effect on the development of brood. At 22 Celsius, miners took 78 days to develop. At 24 Celsius, they took 59 days. And at 26 Celsius, they took 38 days to go from egg to adult. It's quite a significant variance for such a small increment in temperature. On the other hand, colonies require a constant supply of water and a moist environment to thrive. The distribution range and activity of Hedolimegacephala appears to be limited by the susceptibility to desiccation and higher temperatures. Dry and hot environments will quickly kill any colony. In the wild, big-headed ants are reportedly omnivorous, feeding on sweet liquids such as honeydews, dead insects and soil invertebrates. This species has a tendency to alternate between protein and carbohydrate, although a higher preference for protein food is noted. This suggests that the mixture of these two classes of food should be used to ensure good and thriving colony growth. Fadoli megacephala is a good predator with an efficient nestmate recruitment that enables the species to dominate and the opportunity. The recruitment mechanism allows the species to organize the defense and rapid depletion of these food sources prior to any contact with competitors. The first foraging workers are capable of assessing the type and size of food source and will recruit the necessary nestmates accordingly. For example, recruiting the soldiers, which also have the ability to rapidly gather and transport larger loads of liquid food than the miners, and so gain an advantage on the exploitation. Their foraging trails and tunnels can be seen along the soil surface, as well as often observed along tree trunks sometimes climbing into tree canopies. Similar trails may be also seen on the exterior walls of structures as ants climb into artificial voids. 
The maximum foraging distances observed are about 3 meters away from the tunnels. Another important aspect that gives Fidoli megacephala the upper hand is that they are extremely aggressive towards other ant species. Colonies of Fidoli megacephala are strongly territorial and exclude other dominant territorial ants. Studies show that amongst the top 5 tramp species, big-headed ants were the most aggressive species with consistently initiating attacks in all trials. Their aggressive behavior, coupled with large colony size, appear to contribute to the success of Phytolimegacephala in the wild. New colonies of Phytolimegacephala are commonly founded through budding, with one or more fertile queens, followed by a group of workers, splitting off the main colony. However, it was found that new colonies may also be founded by single, inseminated queens, or also called haplometrosis. On experimental trials, solitary queens began to lay eggs one or two days after the setup, and worker densities reached those found in swarm-created colonies after 200 days. As in several other invasive ant species, colonies are polydomous and polygenous, with nests in large areas often forming super colonies that aggressively fight other ants or outcompete them by depleting their prey and other resources. Like most other species of dominant invasive ants, exotic populations of Phaedolimegacephala typically form unicolonial supercolonies. Unicolonial ants carry polydomy and polygyny to the extremes. Colonies are huge, each being a network of hundreds or thousands of nests, each with multiple queens. There is no worker aggression and there is free movement among nests on a vast scale. The energy that might have been put into fighting for food or for territory now flows into the common good, which means more ants. The absence of worker aggression over large areas is thought to be important in allowing these ants to attain high densities and ecological dominance. It is thought to be related to the low genetic variation that this species exhibits in its invasive populations. Recent studies show that encounters between two megacephala workers never yield aggression, irrespective of chemical, genetic or geographical distances between the workers. The study suggests that other factors are involved in the ecological success of this species. The most important of all, it can live in the vicinity of humans. The role of human activities is central in the invasion processes, as invasions generally occur through global human movements as well as from and to human disturbed areas. Tramp species are known to be able to easily occupy open and disturbed areas. However, primary and secondary forests have a lower proportion of these species. Instead, those habitats contain more endemic species. It has been proved that by maintaining these areas protected and pristine allows the endemic vulnerable species to have invader-free areas that allow them to continue to thrive during the peak population densities of invasive ants and later recover after the invaders' populations decline. Such a case occurred in Madeira, a Portuguese archipelago off the northwest coast of Africa. Even after about 150 years of residence and mediatic population explosions, Fidoli megacephala failed to achieve widespread distribution and ecological dominance. Climate, vegetation and competition altogether prove too much even for the mighty African big-headed ant. Another example can be found in Australia, where inside the undisturbed areas, the dry and hot weather serves as a natural barrier, as the thermal limit of invasive Phaedolimegacephala is significantly lower than that of the common Iridomimex species. So even if the climate didn't finish them off, the endemic rainbow ants would. So why am I keeping these exotic, invasive ant species, you might wonder. As I told you before, the Macau Science Center is preparing a permanent local biodiversity exhibition. For the first rounds of colonies, there will be 100% native and local species, caught and raised by me. But as time goes by, some upgrades will be necessary. And I think it would be interesting to show the power of invasive ants, and how big their colonies can get, and how the damaging they can be and what we can do to prevent it. So this is all for this week's video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about them, if you have them near you or not, and what is your approach to their presence. 
and see you next week's video. Thank you very so much for watching. Bye.